Hey guys, I can't tell if you're there yet. I'm trying to get my iPad to work. Oh, seriously. There we go. It's Monday. I feel like I need more coffee. <laughs> Just like always. How are you guys today? I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving. We're here to do some little paintings again for Monday with DecoArt. I'm going to have trouble getting rid of these. I know. See, I need more coffee. So these are the four that we've done already. And this week, because on Wednesday... Hello, Cindy. How are you? Um, because on Wednesday we're doing the Bird of Paradise painting... Um, for watercolor Wednesday I thought today that we would do one or two more of the little canvases and we would do them tropical themed I'm not too jazzed this morning about painting a bird of paradise I'm just not in into the zone if you all know what I mean but I think I'm gonna try it anyway be prepared for disaster because <laughs> inevitably when I'm trying to paint something I'm not really feeling it usually doesn't turn out well but you all know I don't um, hide my mistakes from you um, it's part of the creative process we all make them so you know I'm pretty out there with that um, I do think we'll do um, we'll try for Bird of Paradise one and maybe a little seascape on the other one so put these aside I got two more of the mini canvases these are $4.99 for two at Hobby Lobby I'm sure you could probably get them cheaper somewhere else um, I really can only go shopping at Hobby Lobby right now because they don't have tons of scented pine cones. Yeah, you just go with it and it's all good. Exactly. I do have a bunch of changes coming up for the new year. Um, one of which has to do with these live broadcasts that I'm still fleshing out the details for, but we'll discuss it this morning while we're on here. And those of you that watch Watercolor Wednesdays can let me know what you think. Hey, Cindy. Uh, and before we get too far into it and too far into any discussions, let me stay, say right off the bat, if you're a troll and you're going to say something nasty, just don't even bother. Go somewhere else because we are going to block you. If I don't, one of my uh, people watching will. So just don't even go there, will you? <laughs> All right, so let's try for the bird of paradise first, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I, you guys, I'm not really excited. Hey, Lisa. I'm going to just grab some greens and yellow. I know over the holiday weekend, too, I um, was doing some filmings but without sound. Um, because there's lots of people in the house. I have to do voiceovers today. Um, but in between, I was just sort of uh, watching lots of YouTube, catching up. Okay, so first we're going to, I think, paint the background. And I'm just going to be pretty random about it. I have a little dish with these little paint. Anybody else save these little paint things? I don't know what I'm going to do with them exactly, but... I'll do something. So I'm going to put on some yellows and some greens. I may throw some white on here. I want to keep it kind of light because I don't want the background to be the star. I want the um, flowers to be the star. So I think for the new year, what I'm going to be doing is I'm developing some new paid for classes. One of them is um, um, a watercolor class. It's, they're going to be called Working With. And they'll be working with different mediums, like watercolor. Oh, I will. Okay. Like watercolor, acrylic painting. I might do one on collage. And I think that what I'm going to do as part of the class, and I'll talk about this while I'm zooming you in, is I'm still going to broadcast live. There we go. I'm still going to broadcast live. Here on Periscope, but then I think that I'm going to take the recordings and instead of putting them on YouTube, I'm going to be having them downloadable on a website like Udemy. And I think as part of the new watercolor class that I am doing, I'm going to take 
some of the episodes we've already filmed with the associated PDF files and put them into the new class I'm working on. where appropriate. There'll be at least three of them that I can think of that would fit in there. That means they won't be on YouTube, so if you don't catch me live, you'll have to go over to Udemy or to Crazy Island University and catch them there. Um, or I can leave them on YouTube and have them available for download. I don't know if anybody would buy them, though, if they're available on YouTube, and I guess that's the dilemma I wanted to run by you all this morning. So now I'm just going to take, now you notice all these colors. I have some white, yellows, blues, and greens. These colors all mix well together. They're going to make varying shades of green, and I'm not going to get any brown. So don't put any red in here because you're going to just get mud. And I do have some neons in here because that bright pop of neon is not a bad thing. Don't forget your edges. Did you all eat tons of turkey? So I'm just, I'm not, you know, I'm not being smooth about it. I'm um, not mixing my colors completely. Ham, ah, I love ham. I actually like ham better than turkey. <laughs> That's probably un-American or something. Hello. So the Monday with Deco Art videos will always be free. They will always air to YouTube because it's part of the Helping Artists program with Deco Art. But I'm thinking about doing something different with the Watercolor Wednesday videos for those of you who watch Watercolor Wednesdays. And I'm shooting for December 15th, but I have this feeling that I won't be able to get it done until January 1st. So I think that for 2015, we're going to keep going the way we've been going for now. And then starting January 1, we'll be looking for the Watercolor Wednesday recordings to be something that, we, that is paid for. All right. So that I like that. Let's let that dry just a little bit. I'm going to push it to the side. I have this other one. Let's see, There's a delayed reaction on that. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to take, while that one dries, that's the one, the first, yes, I do. I actually cover um, composition books and journals with my drop paper. This is packing paper from, um, you know, uh, the office supply store. You can get it the, at Staples. You could, if you have like a Beacons or a moving supply company near you, you can get big packs of this stuff. It's really cheap. Okay. So which, what is a good idea? Too little. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's a good idea. My brain is full of ideas. All, not all of them are good. Okay, so on this one, we're going to do a little seascape. So this is a little different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I when I'm working on something and I have little bits and pieces um, of, you know, scraps of collage paper or whatever, I just glue them down to my drop paper. So by the time I'm doing something with it onto a composition book, it's super interesting. So I've got some of the same aquamarine color. I'm going to put some white on here. And because this is the sky and I don't want it too turquoisey, because we're going to do the sky first, I'm going to put some phthalo blue. This might be too much paint, but that's fine. Yeah, it works for a background. Okay, so I'm going to take, this is just a, a plain, flat paintbrush, right? The tr only trick to this is to just start off the canvas and end off the canvas. So I'm going to just run my paintbrush across this way. And actually this brush may be a little bit floppy for this, but 
we're going to make it work. Because I want to just paint, I don't want to stop and get another brush. So leaving it kind of streaky like this suggests a cloudy, interesting, yet blue sky. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. All on its own. I mean, I've done skyscapes where I've just done sky interesting things with skies. Don't forget your edges. The sky is always darker farther away from the earth. And it's lighter near the earth. So when you're laying on your colors, keep that in mind. So you notice my sky is darker near the top of the canvas and it's lighter now down here near the white part that I left white. I'm just using my leftover paint to just scrub it around the edges so the edges, edges aren't white. There we go. I need to stop for a minute. Hang on. Let's see. Where is my, my hand brace is around here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, my left hand is bothering me. All right. Mine's all gray today. I'm in California, so, you know, we don't have enough rain. And I'll, despite the fact that they keep saying El Nino is coming, it's not here yet. And so, <laughs> you know, I don't know where to go with that. All right. Now for, let's see. For the ocean, we're going to go with the aquamarine and I think I'm going to put a little bit of green in it I'm going to switch to a smaller brush it's still a flat one but it's a smaller one and you can tell my brushes are well loved I am not great about taking super good care about my of my paint brushes so and I don't generally at least with my acrylic brushes don't generally spend tons of money on them because at some point they end up looking like this and this one actually is kind of loose. <laughs> Hi! So I'm going to just use my drop paper as palette paper. Good morning, everybody. And I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of aquamarine and a little bit of this. What color is this? This is phthalo green blue and some more white. We're working on a seascape right now while the background for our flower painting dries a little bit. All right, now just like with the sky, the only trick with this is for the most part, I'm going to go straight up. I'm going to start off the canvas and end off the canvas. Only I want the sky to be more of blue, of a blue blue, and I want the water to be more of a green blue. Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit of the aquamarine, a little bit of the green, and a tiny bit of white, all on the brush at the same time. They're not blended. The first stroke, you want to be fairly straight, unless you want to paint a stormy sea. If you're at the beach and you look at where the ocean meets the sky, it's going to be a fairly straight, even line. And it's probably a good thing I didn't have that extra cup of coffee I was kind of wanting because then I wouldn't be able to make that the least bit straight. <laughs> that would be a problem. If you put a little bit of white in there and streak some white in, it can sort of look like white caps. Again, don't forget your sides. Don't mix it completely. You want to work with the natural variation in tone that you're going to get in the paint. If I paint the sides now, then I don't have to worry about it later. When I do big canvases, sometimes I just paint the sides black. 
feel free to ask me any questions as you're watching. I was watching a broadcast of the Frugal Crafter recently. She talked about how some broadcasters broadcasts are a little bit boring, and I thought, geez, I hope that's not me. So if it is, if you you know, hopefully it's not me. I tend to make fun of myself, so. Okay, that's already pretty interesting, isn't it? So now I'm just kind of putting like sort of dots of paint, textures of paint with the paintbrush, moving it around just a little bit. <laughs> oh, good. See? Um, just to give it some texture down here. Oh, thank you. Sometimes I get to painting and I forget that there's anybody watching, so that happens. <laughs> All right, and that one's still wet, so let's continue on with our little seascape. I'm going to get just some plain white. And I'm going to get, I have a bunch of little brushes here I pulled out today. This is a little round one. This is a folk art brush. And I, they're some of my fav favorite acrylic painting brushes because they are inexpensive and they're really well made I think I need to turn this just a little bit I'm going to look down here where I painted the ocean and I'm gonna look for thanks I'm gonna look for the spots that are already lighter and brighter the spots where there's maybe already some white paint and I'm gonna take my little round brush and I'm gonna just I'm tapping it I'm barely touching the canvas and then I'm gonna drag it just a little bit Here's another spot. Now see that starts to look like white caps or foam in the ocean, right? You're just suggesting them. You know, I'm not I'm an expressive painter, I'm not a realist painter. I like being able to suggest shapes and movement with colors and and texture rather than actually paint it. These little seascapes are fun to make. They make great Christmas presents. Although I think all of my friends who know me in real life would rather I not give them any more seascapes. Because I paint a lot of seascapes. So then you just, just keep going until your ocean is, you know, you're happy with your ocean. Now, my oceans all tend to be stormy. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I tend to do stormy oceans. I think I just like painting the foam. <laughs> I don't know. See, that's pretty good. See? Just a little bit of white paint. That's all that was. <laughs> Oops. I just see, I was like, is that dry? It's dry. <laughs> well, it's not dry. Let's see. Let's get my fingerprint out of there. There we go. Okay. We're going to put some clouds in the, in the sky, but first we need to let it dry a little bit. I know, right? See, I'm already, I already had a creative, uh, opportunity happen there, right? So here is our other kind of very abstract, oops, I know, right? Uh, background. We're going to try to do Bird of Paradise. I, you know, other up until I did the one in watercolor, I really don't paint Bird of Paradise. Um, I'll show you the watercolor one. Let's see. If I can find it. Yeah, here. This is the watercolor one. So I'm going to actually leave it up here and we'll, oh, good. See, Jerry, everybody needs a break. All right. So let's get out some colors. We already have some white. Let's get out some green. We have our same blue green. That's the watercolor one. And we are going to be doing that on Wednesday, watercolor Wednesday. I'm going to get out some yellow. 
And I have this color I pulled out, which is Dahlia Ride Yellow. And I do not think that's how you pronounce that, but, you know, I have trouble with English, so. But it's more of an orangey yellow, a warmer yellow. Um, we're going to need some red. And we're going to need some blue. At least that's the colors I used in the watercolor painting. Um, I know, see, right? These are these are my friend Jerry Bellini from My Arts and Parts. Her favorite colors are green and yellow, so see? Um, and then we're probably going to want a little bit of something dark because to make paintings really pop, no matter your medium or any artwork really, you want a really good balance of your medium tones, but then really light lights and dark darks. And that the light lights and the dark darks really make the the other in-between tones really pop. Or if you're using all really bright colors, use some neutrals because those are going to really make those bright colors really pop. So this is uh, brown. This is raw umber. Yeah, raw umber. All right, and let's go back to that round brush. I like that round brush. All righty. So first we're going to sketch in, um, you know, the basic, the stems. Let's see. I always thought Bird of Paradise were, was an interesting name for a strange flower, and I could never figure out how it got that name. I found the original reference photo for this on Pinterest. So if you're looking to try a painting like this, there's tons of reference photos for different things like this on Pinterest. It's a great place to find reference photos for stuff. Normally, I would let the background dry. Welcome. Now with watercolor, you would do this in your lightest value first, and then you would go darker because you can't really uh, take it back. But this is acrylic paint, and nothing is dry. This whole thing is really, really wet. But I could, if I don't like where I put something, just let it dry and then go over it. Uh, again with more colors and it would be fine. Because this is wet, I'm going to have to be really careful about blending, putting on the yellow and the red and making sure that I don't make mud when I put them on. Right now I'm just spreading out kind of my dark green color and refining the basic stem shapes for my flowers. I think that's pretty good. Hey, how are you? Good morning. Alrighty. So now we're going to go in with um, some bright yellow. Let's see. I'm going to start just kind of mapping out. <clears throat> I don't know. In a bird of paradise flowers, do you, um, okay, do you call them petals? I don't know if you do or not. Whatever they're called, I'm going to map them out. Oh, you're welcome. I try to always post um, something. Sometimes I almost forget, but then one of my admins from my Facebook group usually reminds me. <laughs> it's good to have friends who are in the art field like you are because they can remind you when you forget stuff like that. So know that when you're working with yellow paint in any medium, yellow is a fairly translucent color. Um, it doesn't cover it, the underneath layers well. So if you really want it to, you're going to have to put some white down there first before you put the yellow on or mix it with white. Okay. Now I'm going to go with my darker. I don't know. What is this called? Dal, day, day, daily ride. I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's the color, anyways.
<laughs> well, I'm glad you're doing better and I'm glad that you're here joining us today and you're feeling up to joining us. We're just working on some little four by four paintings. Uh, Christmas is coming. So, you know, I've got Christmas gifts to make. And although, you know, I've not really feeling the bird of paradise painting this morning i promised i said i would do it anyway and we'll try you know it may end up being something i paint over but we'll see we'll see i don't know i don't know we'll see so i'm just adding some of this more orangey yellow in here I'm, I, I just have the um, uh, watercolor in front of me, but the original photo I got this from uh, was on Pinterest, and I did create a Pinterest board with watercolor inspiration photos. So if you go find me on Pinterest, um, it's over there. There is links to all of my social media stuff on my website, GinaBAarons.com, and I believe they are somewhere on my Facebook group, too. Now I'm going to go in with my red. Let's see. Now, one of the joys of acrylic paint is if you get some color on there somewhere that you don't like, um, especially if your background is dry, which mine is not, you can just get a baby wipe in there and just wipe the whole thing off. My background is wet, so if I get too much like red right there, I have to be careful about taking it off. The challenge when doing paintings like this on these little canvases is not, for me, is not painting the subject matter as much as painting it in such a small area. Um, you have to be a lot more suggestive about the shapes than you maybe even normally would be because of the small um, format. It's hard to get in there. It's when you really want to make sure you have a good collection of small brushes. I'm wanting to add some neon orange, so we're going to do that. That's not horrible. I don't know that it's my best painting I've ever done, but it's not horrible. Hey, Mark. So I'm going to get in here and in the areas that I think should be brighter. I'm going to tap in just a little bit of... Good morning, Dina. I know nothing about Bird of Paradise flowers other than what I see on Pinterest. I'm not a gardener. <laughs> and anybody who knows me knows I hate gardening. I like homegrown vegetables, but that's about it. Which is funny because we have a pretty large uh, piece of property. For, for city dwellers, we have large, I should say. And I can't stand gardening. That's not bad. It's not horrible. It's I don't know that it's my best painting ever, but it's not horrible. So I'm going to come in with some blue. These are acrylics. Um, I don't paint oil. I um, have asthma. These are deco art. Traditions Artist Acrylics. You can get a little sample pack that has 12 little bottles in it, including some mediums like a retarder um, at decoart.com, which I think is a good deal, especially if you're, you know, wanting to try their paints but not wanting to invest in like a huge big set of big bottles. Um, 
Yeah, see, I like things like that, Mark. Um, you can get the, you know, I love companies that have these like sample packs where you can just get a few and try it. That's really the way to go. And so far I'm really loving their, their paints. Their paints are really, you know, I think they're very well done. That's not horrible. It's not great. But it's not horrible. <laughs> it would be better if I could let things dry, but I'm going to come back in here with some green. Acrylic paint is all about layers of color and marks. So, you know, if you don't get the right color in the right place the first time, don't worry about it. Just keep going. We have a fan over on the Watercolor Wednesdays who loves Bird of Paradise. And they're the ones that requested the original lesson. So that's how this all came about in the first place. I'm going to grab some brown. Now you can, just like with watercolor, for your shadow colors, you can use, of course, black or brown or um, and white for the um, highlight colors. Yeah, acrylic is a lot more forgiving than watercolor. Um, but, you know, I usually don't. I usually use, like, bright orange for my bright color, fluorescent co orange, lemon yellow, um, dark blue, which I've used a little bit in here, but you can also throw in just a little bit, you know, we have all these bright colors here, so tossing in a little bit of something neutral. No, I didn't do any pencil sketching, I just started painting. I don't generally do any pencil sketches. I do occasionally, but not normally. Okay, that's not bad. I am noticing something I don't like. So I'm gonna take a small, I have a little tiny flat brush here. I don't like this shape right there. So we're going to just erase it. The background is wet, remember. And what's so crazy about this one here? That's not bad. I'm going to mix some of our yellow with some of the white. I've got a liner brush, one of these long, thin, you know, it's got like painting with an eyelash. Um, Cause I did it live here on camera. You know, I keep saying they're Christmas presents, but I have yet to give one away. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm going to try to give them as Christmas gifts. Normally I would not um, be doing this on a wet background. Normally I would let it dry, but I've done, I'm doing this whole thing on camera.
you have to be really careful that you don't muddy up the colors. No, and, you know, I'm in California and things are pretty dry here, but they're not that dry. Yeah. <laughs> At least my periscope on my iPad is behaving today. Um, it doesn't always, so... <laughs> Yours is upside down. Mine, mine is straight today. Usually, I'm the one that's telling you all that my picture is upside down. So I'm just refining my shapes just a little bit. I've got some paint on my brush, but I am just barely touching it to the canvas. I want to pull some of these bits out to a sharper point. Because I want to be suggestive, but I want to give it some form, too. I want to be um, just abstract enough to be interesting, um, but give it enough form that you can kind of tell what it is. It's not my best painting in the world, but it's not bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm going to let it dry a little bit before I decide if I'm going to do any more to it. Let's go back to this one. This one's more fun. Now this one is drier because I think it had less paint on it to begin with. So my sky is dry. <laughs> no, Danny lines. No, you're so funny. Bird of paradise. It's not my best painting, but you can kind of tell the tell what they are a little bit. It does have a slightly abstract look, and I'm okay with that because I kind of like abstract, so... All right, so this is our more realistic of the two. Um, hi, nerd. I don't know. If you're going to be nasty, just don't bother because we'll block you. All right, so this is the, this is the um, seascape. So the, the ocean is almost dry. The sky is dry. Um, and since we have a little bit of stormy wave action going on here, down here at the bottom, let's put some, a couple of cloud, um, a couple of clouds in the sky. We already kind of have suggested these streaky cloud shapes, but you can put on top of them other cloud shapes. Um, I'm going to use this brush, I think. I'm going to make some purple. I'm just, I have purple. But I'm going to make some purple because I have this wet paint on my drop paper. I'm going to mix the red and blue. This is about as realistic as I ever get. Um, it started with an A. I didn't catch the name. Maybe somebody else did. I'm going to put a little white in this. And we're going to need some fresh white. So I know you can kind of see this on the on the camera. I want you to see the canvas more than me mixing paint. Okay, so I've made a kind of a, a purpley color. And I'm going to put it in the sky where I want my clouds to be. Now, you know, when you're doing any painting, you don't want your horizon line smack in the middle. That's boring. I think that was it. Oh, bah, um, a two. Um... You don't want your horizon line smack in the middle. You don't want whatever your focal point is smack in the middle. That's boring. And you want to um, have, if you have your items on here in groups of three, it's more interesting. It, it is. That's what it should be. Um, I'm just mixing the paint right on my palette paper, my drop paper. <laughs> it's just drop paper. So I'm going to put um, one purple blob here. And one over here. And maybe one up here. Now I'm going to do a blob and then I'm going to go straight out this way. A blob and then straight out this way. A blob and then straight out that way. So a blob that's flat on the bottom. 
Then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to smear it around just a little bit. And wipe off my brush on the drop paper, but I'm not going to clean it. And I'm going to grab some white and go right into the wet purple paint. I'm going to use a combination of, you know, tapping it on, rubbing it on, smearing it on, getting my fingers involved until I get a cloud I like. This is DecoArt Traditions Acrylic Paint. This is Monday with DecoArt. It's this paint here. Okay, this is acrylic paint. I don't want you guys to be afraid you're going to spoil anything. If what happens if it if you get it in the wrong place? If your background is dry, get a baby wipe and just wipe it off. Your background will be fine. Worst case scenario, it's just one layer that you have to add more layers. It's somebody's telling you you need to add more layers. And once you've done a few of these, you'll get the hang of it. So I'm going to do all my clouds that way. This uh, Periscope um, will be on YouTube later. I am, I always save them to my phone. So you'll be able to watch it on YouTube later. And um, you're welcome. And I will be, um, I don't remember if I did it or not. I know it's on my to-do list, but I will be making a Monday with DecoArt from Periscope playlist. And I, I don't remember if I did it or not yet. I have... I have this feeling I didn't do it yet. So you just keep adding layers to your clouds like you would anything else in any other painting. And the more layers you do, you know, the more interesting it's going to be. I have this thing about really painting skies, especially stormy skies. So there you go. That's pretty interesting all by itself, right? So we're going to need some black. Actually, we could use dark brown. I might want to use dark brown. All right, so we're going to take one of our small round brushes. And we're going to use the brown that's out here on my palette. Thank you. And let's put a couple of birds. Like the birds are trying to flee the storm before, you know, things get really bad. There's a little blob right here. So, right? There's a little blob right here. So I think a bird needs to be there. Make volume. What do you mean by that, Dina? I think I know what you mean, but you better explain it first. I'm barely, barely, barely touching the brush to the canvas. Remember what I said about things in groups of three. So we got to put another bird on here somewhere. That's pretty good. And you could leave it at that. There's no reason why you can't. Yeah, so there's you can mix your traditions, your your acrylic paints with lots of different uh, mediums, um, like gel mediums, to really thicken up the paint and give it volume. And when it dries, it's going to stay really thick. Um, and if you put a lot of it on the background, like I did on this, you know, it's not self leveling. So when this dries, it's going to have texture to it and you know, have, you know, bumps and ridges there. It's going to dry that way. I think that's what you meant. Um, because these are not, um, 
heavy body paints. They're not fluid, but they're not heavy body. They're more the consistency of craft paint. So to thicken them, you would want to, so that you can get volume and texture, you'd want to mix them with a gel medium. Um, let's see. And I have to say, I do think they make one, but I don't think I have it. Oh, oops, what happened to Periscope? Um, so it comes with a glazing medium and retarder, the little, the little bottles. You can get a set of these little bottles of the Deco Art Traditions paints and you get three, six, seven, eight, nine, you get 10. Oh, I did crap. Um, you, uh, you get 10 little bottles of paint and you get two mediums. You get glazing medium and retarder. Um, and I don't know if Deco Art makes a gel medium. Okay, see, it's okay in the phone, but it's not on the iPad. I don't know. See, we were doing so well there. <laughs> I don't know. It's okay on the, on the phone that orientation didn't change, so I don't know. Sorry, guys. We're going to blame it on Periscope. So you definitely could do that. And I, you know, I didn't mix, these are just straight out of the bottle. I didn't mix them with anything. The other thing you can do with these little canvases, especially the seascapes that's fun to do is when the acrylic paint um, <laughs> is completely dry, you could put a little bit of um, glitter glue on these white caps to give them a little bit of a sparkle. How much do I draw? I draw all the time. Every day, I do a little drawing every day. So that's, you know, I'm going to call that done because I like that. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything else to it now. You could, if you have some metallic pens, let's see, I have the DecoArt paint pens and they actually work on, they work in situations like this, but the only metallic one I have is gold. And I don't think that's going to work on there. Hey, Mike. But you definitely could do this little seascape and you could put little, you know, a little bit of glitter glue into the white caps and just blend it down smooth with your fingers and it makes it look a little sparkly. Um, if you wanted to make this be a sunset seascape, then you'd want to put a little bit of, you know, yellow uh, above the horizon line here where the sea meets the sky. But and then blend it in and make sure that um, whatever is above the ocean is reflected in the ocean um, to make it look more real. Um, remember, if you're going to do that, and you, you have all these blues and purples on here, and that works. But if you're going to add yellow or red, make sure these are dry completely, because otherwise you're just going to get a brown sky and you won't be happy. So these are the two we did this morning. And, you know, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the. It's flipping around all by itself, and I'm not even touching anything, so I don't know. <laughs> my, my iPad is just flipping all around. And see, this is what I do with the leftover paint. Thanks, Mark. I just spread them around. It's, I know, right? Right, Mike? It's just, I don't know. It's very weird. I didn't do anything to it. So then at some point, this will be messy enough um, and, uh, you know, interesting enough, and I'll, I'll cover a journal with it. But these are the two little paintings we did today. These are the other ones. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to widen out the camera again. I should sign the backs of these. You know, I haven't signed any of these yet. I don't mind if the back gets wet paint on them. There you go. I know I, I need to date them. I need to actually go back to the uh, videos and figure out when I 
did the videos. So there they are, and I keep saying they're for Christmas gifts, but every time I paint some new ones, then I group them like this, and I don't want to get rid of any of them. Even the Bird of Paradise one that we did this morning, which, you know what? I like it. It's not, is it my best painting? No. Um, but like I said, when we got started, I wasn't feeling it. And when, you know, one thing about art, no matter your medium, if you're not feeling it, um, you should listen to that voice. Oh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I think these would be great grouped on a wall somewhere. You know, I could see, you know, if you have a friend who's maybe getting a new house and they've got a wall they don't know what to do with, you know, at their open house party, get a bunch of these little canvases and give everybody a paintbrush and have everybody make them a little canvas to hang on the wall and then group them together like this on the wall. I think it would be a fabulous look. See, I thought it was a good idea. I have my brain never turns off, so you know. <laughs> Is it somewhere? Mike, do you want the sunflower for Christmas? <laughs> Mike is one of my new friends and fellow teachers over at Journaling Crazy Island Style for Crazy Island University, FYI. And he's a YouTube friend. And uh, I guess we're a big hit on YouTube because I've started seeing people mention our collab videos uh, by name and they're doing them uh, in their own way. Uh, so I think that's all good. Uh, all right. So this will be up on YouTube in um, the next 24 hours. Um, it takes me a little bit to get... Um, oh, see... Uh, well, and I live in California, and we have fields of them in the summertime. <laughs> Just, you know, loads and loads. Um, the video will be up on YouTube within 24 hours. It takes me a little bit to get it saved from my phone to my computer, get it edited. Um, and they're always about an hour long, so it takes a little bit of doing. Oh, you're welcome. Give them both a try. You know, try the, the Bird of Paradise flowers. Try the seascapes. The two hints I can give you are do your backgrounds first. With any of these paintings, if you go back and watch any of the videos for any of these paintings, I always did the backgrounds first. If it was some kind of a landscape or a seascape, the sky first. When you're doing your focal point image, you don't want to have to go back and mess up the background, you know, fix something in the background. You want it done and complete. Um, it's easier. I'm the lazy crafter. I'm not the frugal crafter. That's Lindsay. I'm the, I'm the lazy crafter. So you want to do the background first and then work on your foreground and your focal point. Make sure that, you know, things aren't smack in the middle, that you have them in odd numbered groups, three, five, seven. That's more interesting. Um, when doing faces, hang it off the edge just a little bit. It's more interesting. This one, she's kind of in the middle. She's over to the side a little bit, but this one's more interesting because she's hanging off the edge. Um, the sunflowers smack in the middle, but it takes up the whole thing. So that's why that one works. It takes up the whole thing. Um, so just, you know, remember these little bits and pieces and I'll work on creating that playlist for deco art for the acrylic painting for you guys. Um, so that you can just go to YouTube and just click on the pay the, um, playlist. The faces are in one video and, um, I show you actually how to mix flesh tones in that painting, in that uh, video. I, you know, go out there and be creative. What's the worst that could happen? You're going to make a mistake. Oh, what well, you know, we all make mistakes. Just go out and be creative and try and play. Playing with your supplies and having fun should be the most important thing. It's not about being the next Picasso. It's about having fun and enjoying the process. The, vi the sunflower was the first one of these I did, did Mike. And there's an acrylic video and there's also a watercolor video. And I think one of my rags just fell in the um, trash bin, but that's all right. So go out and play and have fun. And, you know, if you're friends with me on social media and you get stuck on anything and you have a uh, question or a problem or concern, just message me. Um, 
I'm around. I'm always around. <laughs> So, you know, but go out and play and have some fun and don't worry about what anybody thinks except you. Oh, good. I'm glad. That's the whole point. And these little small canvases are way less intimidating than doing a big giant one. Um, these little four by four inch canvases, I don't know what that would be in centimeters, um, but they're way less intimidating you can and you can get these in all different sizes you can get littler ones but I just thought that would be too hard to film on camera and you could get canvas board these are mini stretched canvases but you could get canvas board Etsy um, I, I sell copies of my artwork on a lot of places but I sell the actual artwork on Etsy you can go to my website which is Gina B Aaron's uh, let's see there And you can go to the um, contact me page and it has a list for all the places where you can find me on social media, shops where you can get my artwork and everything else. Wednesday for Wednesday with uh, water, uh, work, water, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I need so need more coffee, you guys. Watercolor Wednesday. This is the watercolor of Bird of Paradise we're going to be working on. There is a PDF download to go with the lesson that's available now in my Etsy shop. Going forward for 2015, the Watercolor Wednesday episodes from Periscope will still be aired live, but then afterwards, instead of going to YouTube, they're going to be something that is on a site where you can pay for the uh, video download and the PDF together. And that price will be like $5. Um, instead of $2 for just the PDF, um, it'll be like $5 and you get the PDF and the video. I'm on Society 6-2 and Redbubble and Cafe Press and a bunch of places. <laughs> Alright, I think that's it right now. I need to seriously go make that other cup of coffee. Um, Etsy. Etsy's easy. I'm the lazy crafter. Etsy. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a great day, everybody. Go and play. Um, Mike, uh, we'll talk about the sunflower painting. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I'm everywhere. <laughs> All right. You're welcome, everybody. And I will talk to you soon. If you have our biz questions, then you want to um, join maybe my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, and ask them there. That's one of the things the group is about. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye.